I just walked into the uh, sh shack, the uh, trailer as we call it. This is a uh, standard construction trailer. Uh, many you will see them at construction sites uh, here in Alberta. They're used a lot at oil and gas well site uh, facilities as well. It's uh, 10 feet uh, by 24 feet long. Uh, I bought it used. Um, uh, at a at, from a, from a, an, an auction, uh, it is uh, heated with electric baseboard heating. Uh, in uh, there's uh, two baseboard heaters, and what I did do is uh, wall off uh, one portion of the uh, shack. Uh, again, it's uh, it's 24 feet long, and I, that end section is uh, only seven feet. Um, what I did was build a insulated wall and an outdoor steel insulated door. So, uh, especially during the winter, um, the room I'm in now, the workroom, is uh, mostly kept cold, relatively cool. It's kept above freezing, uh, whereas the equipment room is kept at a more comfortable temperature. Also in the equipment room is uh, an air conditioner so that during the summer it's kept cool uh, and a smaller space is easier uh, to keep cool. So this end is my, my workroom. I have... Uh, all of my uh, equipment here, I have a workbench, um, which I use a lot. I mean, gosh, you know, it's uh, really handy to have the ability to work up here and uh, repair the equipment. All of my uh, tools and uh, paraphernalia that I, uh, that I require. Um, one other thing I've, I do, I normally will keep my chainsaws in the uh, outdoor garage, but uh, during the winter, I keep them in here since when I come up with, uh, if I have a down tree, it's much easier to gain access to the saws and, and an effective repair. Let's go into the radio room and I'll show you the equipment. The equipment is all housed on a standard storage rack that can be purchased from uh, most home uh, building stores. I mean, it's really simple. It's just a, uh, st it's a steel rack, a steel frame with uh, wooden shelves. And the benefit of this, and my plan all along, was by locating this in the center uh, of the room, I'm able to walk around full 360 degrees to uh, affect uh, and provide access to, uh, you know, all of the equipment and to uh, be able to route uh, wiring uh, easily uh, to all of the equipment. Uh, the other thing I did do was uh, build a shelf, a uh, simple uh, wooden shelf here to uh, house the PC monitors. I have three PCs here. Um, the one is the main computer, which is used for logging and uh, radio control and switching. Uh, another one is the uh, camera, uh, my security system, as well as my SDR um, uh, skimmer RBN PC, and the one at the top, which is, I don't know, it's currently uh, idle. Um, that's used for my Perseus uh, uh, radio and uh, Jaguar a medium wave DXing uh, PC, which is uh, located out here. Let's tour the equipment rack. Equipment rack here at the bottom. I just work my way up. I've got uh, a new addition to the shack, an OM 4000A amplifier. I added that uh, recently uh, as a backup amplifier. I, for ma for many years, um, I've been just using the ACOM amplifier. Uh, the PCs are here beside it. Um, there's three PCs. Uh, you can hardly see the other one, it's a small unit to the left. And I also have a UPS supply to try and uh, minimize any downtime on the PCs if I have a, a, a power surge here. The next rack up houses uh, one of the modems for the two internet connections. Uh, this is actually my router, the IQ router. And uh, the Flex uh, 6600 radio uh, is uh, right beside the ACOM 2000A uh, amplifier. Uh, this is the other radio rack. Uh, at this end is my other modem for the uh, LT or the um, uh, WISP provider, my other internet connection, my OM power amplifier control unit, which is connected to the PC and is on the in on the um, network, and I can access that from the PC and also from home. Uh, the K3 has uh, had been the main radio. Um, it's now not really used that much. I've been using the Flex uh, almost exclusively. Uh, it's connect the, the K3 is connected to home through the remote rig, uh, RCC uh, boxes. Um, really find that I'm just not using this radio as much as I used to. I really can't uh, give up the, the uh, waterfall and the spectral display on the uh, Flex. I was hoping for the K4 to come through, but um, I don't think they're quite ready for a full remote uh, connection. Uh, this is a very important box. Uh, this is the Station Master. Uh, uh, switch box uh, from uh, Microham. Uh, this is a vital piece of equipment here at the shack. I encourage you to maybe, uh, if you're interested, watch a video I have uh, talking about my band switching or my just general switching here at the station. Um, anything, any frequency dependent switching is done with this box. And it's not just simple band changes. My 80 meter uh, Yagi has uh, 
uh, over eight different band switching segments to, to move myself across the band, uh, as does my 40 meter Yagi. They're both shortened Yagis, so very narrow bandwidth. Uh, same with my 160 meters. I have uh, four different uh, in-band segments that are automatically switched with this uh, based on my uh, frequency. And I think there's over 12 relays in that box. Pretty cool. Uh, my rotator uh, for the uh, for the Yagi stack, as it were, uh, we're in the uh, Power Master uh, power meter. Top shelf, uh, my DC power supply. It's an Astron. I don't know what it is. I don't know how many amps it is, but uh, 70 or something like that. Um, the uh, 24 volt supply, that's for my uh, 24 volt system, which drives some of my vacuum relays. This is my uh, relay switching board. Again, I have a video on this, but uh, it describes more of the way I switch things at the sh uh, out here. This is for switching the beverages and, and also controlling various things, uh, ancillary things. This is a Denkovi board, a 16 relay board. That's um, uh, on the network and is accessible on my PC which again, through uh, TeamViewer or my other remote desktop applications is accessed from home. So I can turn all the different things on, the lights on in here, uh, uh, outside lights, I can turn the amplifiers uh, on and off and uh, make the yag or rather uh, crank the tower up or down so and and I you know so anything I want to control I can do it with that uh, particular board this one in the middle um, that's just a wind speed indicator which has got its own wind gauge and um, it's set to trigger at a certain wind speed to bring the tower down automatically uh, these uh, eight relay boards are for controlling uh, in this case this controls my beverages uh, there's eight relays for all eight directions of the beverages uh, this is for the nine circle uh, receive array, the YCC nine circle array, and uh, all eight directions are controlled with that. And uh, this is my 160 meter, uh, yay, 160 meter uh, parasitic array, and that's how I change directions with that. Uh, just while I'm here, again, I encourage you to look at my video if you're interested in that, but these compass gauges here uh, all drive um, those relays. In fact, as soon as I click this, I'm activating those relays to change my beverage direction, and, and this is the equivalent for the uh, Yesu uh, rotor. Is my uh, my uh, uh, switch uh, my switch for uh, all of the uh, for the LAN? I've got quite a few uh, LAN connections going on out here. Um, this is the microbit uh, uh, web switch, um, kind of a legacy device, but I still use it because it's kind of handy. It's got a watchdog uh, in it. Uh, oddly enough, my internet provider doesn't have a, a watchdog in in either of their um, configurations. So, uh, I with this device, I, I uh, ping. Um, uh, Google and if I ever lose a ping uh, it's set to uh, it'll automatically trigger a relay and reboot the router and I uh, that's actually uh, saved me uh, a few times well, this thing I don't know if you can see it there's a uh, copper two inch copper strap and that strap runs all the way along the bottom and I don't know if you can see it here as well there's a copper strap there and that copper strap is tied in to another copper strap which runs all the way uh, up to the top. So on every shelf, there's a two inch copper strap running the full uh, length of the shelf. And that uh, is uh, uh, used to ground all of the equipment with very short ground leads to every single uh, connection. Even in these cases with the uh, switch boxes, they receive it switch boxes, they're bolted uh, directly onto that ground uh, strap. The ground strap itself uh, goes down and is, uh, I, I milled it outside of the shack and that goes outside uh, just right down to the ground like it's very short and then it's right onto another copper pipe which is uh, integrated fully into the earth ground but also the entire ground uh, radial system surrounding the entire uh, shack here where my uh, transmit antennas are and that combined with the fact that this uh, this trailer is or this shack is covered in aluminum siding I'm literally in an RF tin can and I have absolutely no RF issues inside the shack um, this is the entry panel. It's a copper, a solid copper plate. It too has a copper strap going right down and integrated into the uh, ground radial system and earth ground. Uh, some uh, lightning di uh, di um, discharge uh, c uh, devices on the feed lines to the transmit antennas. And these are the various uh, switching boxes uh, for some of the beverages. Uh, all. Um, as I think I showed in the outside video, all lines are protected with either gas discharge tubes or uh, MOVs. I got a little bit of a view here of the back. You know, gosh, I, I, I repeatedly say that one day I'm going to clean this mess up, but 
I never get around to it. You know, that, you know, I start out with good intentions trying to keep this all neat, but it doesn't end up that way. But I try and make sure all connections are solid and uh, as short as possible. Uh, this is a little, uh, this is my RBN skimmer and SDR section. This is my uh, QS1R skimmer and t uh, SDR radio. That's used for my RBN skimmer. That skims all bands. Uh, the antenna is a um, 30 meter loop using a Wellbrook preamp. And that, that's what I use mostly for skimming um, and spotting to the RBN. A little SDR IQ I'll use to skim also occasionally on 160 meters on uh, one of the beverage systems. And this is my Perseus uh, radio, which I've been using a lot lately uh, for medium wave uh, broadcast band DXing. The uh, power distribution here is uh, affected by these long power strips. Uh, I don't know where I got them. I think Home Depot, maybe Amazon. But every shelf has uh, one of these power strips on it. And um, I never thought I'd fill up all of the uh, outlets, but I've pretty much filled every single uh, outlet on these bars on every uh, shelf. Uh, they are uh, hardwired, obviously, uh, directly into the uh, main distribution power panel. I'm pretty sure I wired them so that each has its own uh, uh, individual uh, breaker on each uh, power bar. I also ended up installing, I decided to install a whole house surge protector uh, that's on the entry uh, entry line. I don't know if it's ever triggered. I, if it has, I didn't know it. Um, never had any uh, touch wood, uh, lightning issues uh, uh, in the shack here at all. Uh, I guess that's it, guys. One last comment um, regarding a summary of how the station is controlled. You know, I've had many guys ask, you know, about how, how to control a remote station. And there are a lot of different ways to do it. Many, and I've talked to guys that suggest that, you know, they want to be able to control everything directly over the internet uh, and not, the comment often is not rely on a PC. Uh, again, I'm touching wood as I say this, but I've got three Windows 10 PCs up here. And for the last, well, four and a half years, I, I can't touch wood. I've never had a problem with the PC. They are always on and um, I never turn them off. And, uh, you know, it's been very reliable. I mean, nothing is completely without failure, but th the simplicity of that, I guess what I want to get at here is the simplicity is by logging in to the PC, which resides here at the shack, uh, this PC, the one I've got my cursor on right here, happens to be the one that controls everything. It controls those relay boards. It controls, it can turn my power amplifier on and off. In fact, I'll even do my logging here. This is Windows 30, uh, 32. I can see my power meter here. Um, so uh, I send my CW from here. And I do that just simply by logging on uh, through any of the desktop applications, be it TeamView or AnyDesk or, or uh, Splashtop. And, and so the simplicity is... Um, I can log on anywhere in the world on my laptop or any PC and log on to this PC and I can completely control my station. There's no need to be uh, accessing through different IP addresses, different devices, different switches and so on and so forth. So, you know, I, I really think, in my opinion, this is a real simple way to uh, control a station. Uh, this is the other PC, which I said uh, sends my RBN skimmer spots and also has uh, my security cameras or my surveillance cameras. And so I just log into this PC and I can look at things. This, this, this particular one here is the camera at the top of my tower. This is looking out the window. This is right here in the shack and a couple more on different posts outside, you know, looking at the tower. I can, you know, just inspect things to see if there's any problems. And in fact, this is the one that, you know, actually looks inside of the shack. So I can just look at the equipment uh, uh, as needed. And, the, you know, I think as I mentioned earlier, the PC at the top here, this one is uh, used to at, drive my Perseus radio and my uh, Jaguar logging program for medium wave broadcast band DXing. And, you know, it returns everything. I just log onto this PC uh, up here and, and I can hear the audio and, and, and do everything I need to do just as though I'm sitting here. I think it's a great system and it's been working really well for me. Hey, 73 guys, this is Steve, V6WZ.